us now study all 12 cranial nerves on the following points that is the origin from where they arise innervation means where are they going or supplying to the nature which we have already discussed but still one more point and then the main functions so the first one is olfactory and as we have seen that it is a sensory nerve it arises from olfactory epithelium of our nose and then it goes to the brain part and especially to olfactory lobes because it is a sensory nerve starting from the sense organ going to CNS that is the part of the brain sensory nerve and the function is smell it helps us detect those smells optic nerve as the name tells us arising from the retina of the eye going to diencephalon it is also a sensory nerve and because it is arising from nerve perceiving all visual symptom or visual stimuli so it is helping us in vision oculomotor it arises from midbrain we said out of 12 only two nerves arise from midbrain all other from the brain stem that is third and fourth these are the only two nerves which are arising from midbrain so it arises from midbrain the cerebral peduncle part it supplies to the eye muscles when we talk of eyes we talk of various kinds of muscles these muscles are superior rectus inferior rectus internal external rectus and there are some oblique muscles also here we are talking of superior inferior rectus muscle so this function is going to be movement of the eyeball it is arising from brain going to a particular organ that means it is a motor nerve so movement of eye especially up down and sideways movements of the eyes are because of this oculomotor nerve and motor is in its name also easier to remember the fourth one is trochlear which we also said is known as pathetic this also arises from midbrain goes to the eye muscles and here the eye muscles are oblique eye muscles oblique eye muscles help in rotation of the eyeball so this movement of eyeball was eyeball going up down sideways and this is rotation so superior inferior internal external rectus muscles they help in movement of eyeball up down and sideways and oblique rectus muscles they help in rotation of the eyeball and that is the function of trochlear trigeminal medulla it has those three branches and these three branches again it is a mixed nerve and we have seen that mixed nerves have sensory as well as motor fibers so if it is a sensory fiber then it is working as a sensory nerve from skin receptors so it is perceiving those uh, sensations sensations of touch pain all those so sensory receptors which are on skin lip gum and teeth it is a mixed nerve and tactile that means touch and all is received by it that is the sensory part and the jaw movement that is again motor part so a mixed nerve would perform both the function it is sensory also and motor so trigeminal has three branches we call them 5 1 5 2 and 5 3 they are from skin receptors lip teeth and gum it is a mixed nerve because it has a sensory and a motor part tactile that is sensory part and jaw movement that is the okay sorry this is jaw movement that is movement of the jaw because one of the branch is mandibular one branch is maxillary so that is the fifth one sixth abducens it also arises from medulla sixth one it goes to external rectus muscle of the eye it is a motor nerve so helps in rotation of the eyeball fascia as the name tells us it is associated with the face part origin is medulla and it goes to taste buds muscles of face neck and salivary glands it is a mixed nerve mixed means it must be having a sensory branch as well as a motor branch 
So tasting of food, this is sensation, secretion of saliva and movement of neck and the facial expressions that we produce. That is because of these nerves. That is especially the facial one. Auditory. Again, this is the eighth one and first, second and eighth are sensory. So this is a sensory one. It is going to arise from the sense organ. That is internal ear, in cochlea. There is organ of corti from where this nerve originates. It goes to medulla, that is to the CNS. It is sensory and hearing and equilibrium is the function. Then glossopharyngeal arises from medulla. Uh, function is taste buds, again sensory part. It is a mix. Wherever there is a mixed nerve, we have to remember that this nerve is going to function as sensory as well as motor because it has two uh, branches or fibers grow, going through it. So taste buds. Now here, there is a specific thing that it is only responsible for an anterior one third. And here we have written, so this part is posterior two third taste buds. So this is the posterior one and this is for the anterior one. Muscles of pharynx. So the sensory part is taking care of the taste buds and perception of taste. Posterior, oh, sorry, the motor part is responsible for movement of the uh, pharynx because it is going to the pharynx. Mixed nerve, tasting, that is sensory. And swallowing, that is the muscular control, controlled by the motor branch of it. Vagus, the only nerve which leaves the skull region and goes up to the visceral organ, that is the vagus. It arises from uh, medulla. Now there are two parts, that is sense, it is a mixed nerve. So sensory part is responsible for perception of senses, pain from all visceral organs. This is the sensory part we have written here. And motor part goes to the muscles of visceral organs. Visceral organs are like heart, lungs, blood vessels, kidneys, all the even external genitalia. So it is going up to all the visceral organs. So this is the only nerve which leaves the skull region and goes up to the visceral part. All other nerves remain in the skull region at the most in the neck part. Mixed and all visceral functions are under its control. Eleventh, spinal accessory arising from medulla. It goes to muscles of larynx, pharynx, neck, shoulder, etc. It's a motor nerve. That means it must be coming from the CNS up to the structure. Movement of neck, larynx, pharynx and shoulders. And the last one that is glossopharyngeal. Glossopharyngeal also arises from the medulla oblongata. It actually goes to a specific muscle. This is known as hypoglossal muscle which is at the lower part of the tongue. It is a motor nerve. That means it must be bringing about some function or movement. So all tongue movements are controlled by hypoglossal. So this is a complete brief outline of everything. All 12 cranial nerves, their origin, their innervation means which part are they supplying to. The nature, one more time we have written the nature here and the functions. So when we talk of cranial nerves, not only the numbers are important, with the number their names and all other things are also important. Because many a times the questions which are asked are pick out of all the sensory nerves or they give multiple options and we are required to pick which ones are sensory, which ones are motor and all. So this table is going to help understand and remember all important aspects of these 12 cranial nerves.